In the UK, someone dies from pneumonia every 20 minutes. And if you're over 65 and admitted to hospital with it, there's a one in six chance you're not coming home. I'm a doctor in the UK who's been diagnosing and treating pneumonia for years. And I'm gonna show you today why it's not just a chest infection and how you can tell the difference. And most people aren't aware of how a sneaky version of this disease can catch you off guard. Stick around to find out. Hundreds of you have shared the same tragic story with me. Let me share one with you and let's see if it resonates. I tried calling the GP but couldn't get an appointment. I finally saw someone who told me it was a virus and it would just settle. Three days later, I had an ambulance out and was rushed to hospital. My entire lung was filled with pneumonia and it was 50-50 whether I'd make it. Six months later, I still haven't fully recovered. Can't get an assessment, missed diagnosis, near-death experience. It's heartbreaking. Maybe you're sat there nodding because you've been through something similar. Or maybe you're feeling rough right now going through something and I've absolutely terrified you. I'm sorry, but just stick with me. Because most of the time, it really is just a chest infection. But there's a reason so many people confuse the two. Let me explain why. Tubes versus sacs. That's it in a nutshell, but it's crucial to understand that. Here's a quick look at your airways. These tubes from the nose to the throat to the windpipe down to the bronchi are called the upper airways. And their purpose is to allow air to flow from the outside to your lungs. And when these get an infection, we call that an upper respiratory tract infection. Now compare those tubes with these air sacs right at the very end of your airways. These are called alveoli and this is where the magic is supposed to happen. Oxygen goes in, carbon dioxide comes out, and your blood is kept alive and clean. When infection hits here, that's pneumonia. And why does this matter? Because of two things, symptoms and treatment. When infection is in the tubes, you get symptoms related to the phlegm that is being produced by those tubes. For example, runny nose, sore throat, or a cough and chestiness that's deep in here. It's the sort of infection that can make you feel miserable, but you can soldier on because air is still flowing like it should. Now imagine the air sacs, a section of your lung that's completely flooded with pus or fluid. That bit of lung stops working. So your oxygen levels might drop, your heart has to work a little harder, and suddenly you feel terrible. High fevers, chest pain, breathlessness, confusion. And for some people, especially the elderly, they may not even have a cough. And that's why pneumonia used to be called the old man's friend, because it crept in quietly and ended life quickly and sometimes peacefully. But this is modern medicine. We don't have to do that anymore because we have treatment so long as we make the right diagnosis. An upper respiratory tube infection is usually due to a virus, meaning there is no cure. Antibiotics don't work. But the good news is that your body, for most of us, is more than capable of beating it with our own immune system. But pneumonia, that's very often bacterial, and that one does need antibiotics. But how can you tell which one you've got? When do you need to see the doctor? And I know for a lot of people, that's the hardest part. When do symptoms cross a line? When do you need to be worried? When do you need to see the doctor? Because I've seen both extremes. I've seen grown, healthy adults wake up with a runny nose and come in demanding antibiotics. But I've also seen vulnerable people drag themselves in the door with low oxygen, chest pain and shortness of breath, plunk themselves in the seat, and then apologize for wasting my time. And it breaks my heart because it just shows how anxious and confused people are about when to seek help. You feel bad for bothering us. You can't get through on the phone. You've been told it's just a virus, ride it out, but you're feeling more unwell. And you might feel let down, alone and forgotten. And the thing is, most of the time it is a virus and you will kill it yourself, but not always. Sometimes it's pneumonia. So to be perfectly clear, here are the times that you should not wait. Your breathing is getting worse or you can't finish a sentence without gasping for air. 
You've got chest pain when you breathe in. You're shivering, confused, or your lips look pale or slightly blue. To be clear, if that's happening, don't call your GP. Call 999. Get to the emergency department. But if you've had a cough that's lasted more than three weeks, you've coughed up a bit of blood, your breathing feels labored, or your chest aches on and off, you just feel really unwell and it's not shifting, then call your GP. Advocate for yourself. Be clear about the symptoms. Don't overplay them. Don't understate them. Just be honest. You've got to look out for yourself. When I see my patients, I'll check their oxygen levels and their temperature and listen to their lungs. Listening here and here at the sacs for the lungs, not here in the middle of the chest. Sometimes we'll need to get a chest x-ray to make the diagnosis, but most of the time we can hear these crackly sounds and get on with treatment. And the good news is there is a treatment, antibiotics. They really do work, but just bear this in mind. You might get antibiotics for five days, sometimes seven days, and not be full back to normal. And that's because the damage that a pneumonia does can take up to eight weeks to recover, but you should see ongoing steady improvement. Side note, did you know you can reduce the chances of getting pneumonia by quitting smoking, optimizing lung conditions like COPD, asthma, heart failure, diabetes, and there is a one-off pneumonia vaccine on the NHS available to people once they turn 65. Okay, I've really painted pneumonia as a killer, haven't I? And that is intentional because it can be a killer. So if you are very unwell, make sure you seek medical attention. Now, I do need to make you aware of a different type of pneumonia, a more subtle one, one that affects younger people and can be harder to pick up. It's called walking pneumonia. To find out a bit more about it, have a look over here. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope it was useful and maybe I'll see you over there.